there's a famous quote from an old Nobel Prize winner that says, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. That's how complicated and confusing the world of atoms and neutrons and electrons, the smallest things in our universe, is. Hey, Professor Simmons, how you going? But if there is one person that actually does understand it, it's this year's Prime Minister's Prize for Science winner, Professor Michelle Simmons. That's Richard Feynman, I think. Yeah, look, I, 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 it's, it's one of those things that um, I'm an intensely practical person. Until you've done it yourself and you've played with it and you can see it in action, that it does seem a bit surreal. In your words, what is quantum mechanics? Yeah, so quantum mechanics is the, the way that we describe the world when it's very, very small. And so if you imagine if you throw a tennis ball at a wall in, in the kind of big world, the Newtonian world, um, that ball will bounce off the wall and come back and you put your hand up and you can catch it. When you shrink things down to the size of atoms, the world operates a bit differently. So that ball, if it was an electron on an atom, and if that wall was very thin, then it behaves more like a wave. And if the wall is very thin, it can actually tunnel through the wall and come out the other side. And it gets even weirder than that. Things in the physical world can really only be in one state at a time. A light is either on or off. In the quantum world, it can be both at the same time. It's something called superposition, and it's not until we actually observe or measure it that it picks a state. And it still gets spookier than that. Sometimes particles can become connected to each other, and a change to one will mean a change to the other, even if they're kilometres and kilometres apart. That's something called entanglement. Yeah. It's all pretty mind-boggling. And so that's why people don't like it. It seems like it's an impossibility for that kind of thing to happen, but it's just a different way of looking at the energy states as you get very small. Scientists like Professor Simmons can use that weird, spooky quantum world to do some pretty cool stuff, like build computers. So quantum computing is using the quantum states of very small particles to do calculations. See, the most basic units of computing are bits, ones and zeros, that are created by little switches being turned on or off. The more information you're trying to process, the more switches you need. Over the years, computers have gotten faster and smaller, but quantum computers could shrink and speed things up even more by using atoms themselves with all of their weird, spooky properties as those little switches. Professor Simmons says these computers could be more than 150 million times faster than any computer on Earth. Oh yeah, we should be excited. The applications are across every industry that has data. So whether it's how to get um, airlines to reduce their fuel costs, aircraft design, drug design. With quantum computers, we could simulate new chemical reactions or develop new materials, improve self-driving cars and take artificial intelligence to a new level. You know, there's just a huge number of different things that you can do with quantum computers. That's why it's so exciting, because everyone's waiting for the hardware to come along. Professor Simmons says it's just one reason to be excited about the future of science. Honestly, for me, the most exciting thing about science is that it's very creative. I mean, you get to do things that no one's ever done before. But my goodness, there's no better satisfying thing than to understand something for yourself and for the rest of the world and create technologies. I mean, it's really just a fantastic field.